We noted earlier in this series that the Adamic language, the tongue of angels, possessed psychological power. It had the ability to affect the mind of man to the point of overpowering. This was the case of the brother of Jared, whose writings overpowered anyone who read them. The Word of God also has psychological power beyond the words of man, a power to convince man of the truth. The scriptures contain numerous examples of the unique convincing power of the words of God. The brothers Nephi and Lehi were given power and authority in preaching and told specific words to use. Their preaching astonished the Lamanites and then convinced them, with 8,000 baptized unto repentance. Helaman and his brethren also declared the word of God in power. Their words convinced many people and induced them to repent and then be baptized. The three Nephite apostles who were translated were given a special convincing power for their ministry amongst the scattered tribes of Israel and the nations of the world. The written word of God carries with it the same power to convince as does the spoken word. Nephi saw in vision other books which would come forth in the latter days. These books were given the power of the Lamb unto the convincing of the Gentiles and Jews. The Book of Mormon is one of those books with the convincing power of the Word of God. Convincing someone to change a belief or to act upon a new course of action can involve effective argumentation and reasoning. This is one of the primary meanings of convince. Paul, who used the power of logical persuasion throughout his epistles, recommended that a bishop be able to exhort through sound doctrine and thereby convince those opposed to the gospel. The Lord counseled Hiram Smith to first learn the word before declaring it. Even the word of God does not have the power to convince if it can't be first articulated. But to convince can also have an element of causation where the ability to convince is more than argumentation. Even after counseling Hiram to first learn the word, the Lord promised the Spirit which would give him a convincing power above and beyond his argumentation. Joseph of Egypt prophesied that a future seer, whom we know to be Joseph Smith, would be given power to bring forth the word of God, but also the power to convince the seed of Israel. In other words, there is a specific power given of the Spirit that prompts the acceptance of new beliefs and behaviors. This power to convince through the Word is likely due to the Word's effect upon the mind. Alma suggested as much when he decided to preach the Word to the Zoramites. According to Alma, the Word of God causes a powerful psychological effect on the human mind. The effect is likely physiological as well. In modern terminology, it appears that the Word of God, especially spoken in the tongue of angels, creates what is called a state of suggestibility. 
Hypnotists, for example, create a state of suggestibility in their subjects, which then allows them to make suggestions for them to act upon. If the Word of God truly has the power to convince, then it likely creates a state of suggestibility in those hearing or reading it.